Hey everybody, Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Today is Wednesday, September the 26th. We finally arrived to the show so many of you have been asking about. This is the history of one of the most unique and groundbreaking progressive rock acts of all time, in my opinion. Of course, we're talking about the UK's very own Gentle Giant, a band that from the years 1970 and 1980 created some truly, truly different music that encompassed elements of rock and folk and jazz and classical and chamber music, a little bit of soul, uh, all sorts of stuff. It, basically everything but the kitchen sink they threw into their music. It was unlike anything we'd ever heard before. Their musicianship was impeccable. Almost everybody in the band was a multi-instrumentalist, so you had all sorts of different instruments being utilized, including keyboards and guitars and violin and bass, drums, percussion, saxophone, clarinet, vibes, uh, you know, um, what else am I missing here? Mandolin, um, you name it, they used it, okay? Mellotrons, Hammonds, Moog synthesizers, electric piano, grand piano, acoustic guitars, Anything and everything these guys would uh, use in their music. And they released a bunch of albums throughout the 70s. They have like a core uh, few albums that most fans think of their best. At the end of the show, I'm going to tell you which my favorites are, or at least my favorite. It's really hard for me to decide like my top three. I, I thought about it all day long today, and I was like, hmm, it's kind of tough. It's something I've thought about for many, many years, but I've never really been able to settle on just three because there's like a bunch that I really love a lot. So anyway, before we go down that road, let's talk about the history of the band, right? That's what we're here for. So we're going back now to the mid-1960s, okay? So you've got a trio of brothers, Phil, Derek, and Ray Shulman, uh, who were born in Scotland, at least two of the three, born in Scotland. Their family moved over to um, England uh, when I believe Ray was the youngest. So I believe Phil and Derek were actually born in Scotland. Family moved to England, Ray born shortly thereafter. So their father, who was uh, a military guy, actually also a musician, he played uh, jazz trumpet. And of course, having that jazz in the house, having that musicology in the house, that kind of rubbed off on the kids. So they all started playing multiple instruments. And by the time the 60s came around, they started performing in various bands, mostly R&B and soul type of stuff. Again, remember this was uh, this was England, the UK, so they were getting a lot of the, the elements from what was coming in from the US. There was a, this weird thing going back and forth. English bands were kind of digesting what was going on in the US and vice versa. So kind of a cool thing that was happening. So by 1966, Simon Dupree and the Big Sound formed. So it was the Shulman Brothers and a bunch of other musicians basically started out playing, like I said, white soul and R&B and pop, okay? Eventually moved into more psychedelic tunes. I think the record label, they actually were signed to EMI. They had a top 10 hit in the UK called Kites. This was released in 1967. Uh, they also had a album that they released called Without Reservation, but they were more of a singles band at the time. This is uh, kind of a compilation, an anthology of everything that Simon Dupree and the Big Sound released called Part of My Past. I actually, believe it or not, just got this recently. As, as long as a fan of Gentle Giant as I've been, I have never owned any Simon Dupree stuff until recently. And this is basically two discs of the, uh, like I said, the Without Reservation album and a whole bunch of singles and B-sides and things like that. Pretty cool stuff. You know, some of it's, like I said, very poppy very kind of mid-60s R&B, but the late 60s stuff actually is pretty interesting, very psychedelic. Uh, you can hear little bits of what later became Gentle Giant here and there. Um, actually, it's funny because the band were actually, or at least the Shulman Brothers, were actually pretty turned off by the direction that the record company were pushing them towards. They wanted them to be pop stars, and these guys were kind of like, they wanted to move into more adventurous type music. So at one point, they even, uh, they were trying to shed this image and they released a single uh, under the title of the band called The Moles, trying to kind of shed the Simon uh, image a bit. That didn't really go anywhere. So by 1969, they decided to dissolve the band and put it to rest and move in a totally different direction. Of course, we know that direction was Gentle Giant. So 
band forms. Uh, who's in the band? So we've got, uh, of course, the Shulman Brothers on all sorts of instruments and vocals and things like that. Well, basically, Phil, uh, let me just kind of, Phil on vocals, sax, trumpet, clarinet. We got Derek on vocals, sax, and recorder. Uh, Ray on bass and violin. They would find guitarist Gary Green, who was basically a blues guitar player, never really played anything like the music that Gentle Giant will become, on guitar, mandolin, recorder. He also played recorder. Uh, Kerry Minear on keyboards, cello, and vibraphones. And uh, Simon, Simon Dupree and the Big Sound drummer Martin Smith came along to play drums with the band. So they formed the band, they got signed to Vertigo Records, landed with producer Tony Visconti, of course the acclaimed Tony Visconti, for their debut album released in 1970. That's it right there, okay? There's the iconic, iconic painting right there. Very cool album. You'll see it adorns my shirt that I'm wearing here tonight. Uh, a, a very cool album, very strong album, a very strong debut. Again, unlike anything most people had heard at the time, this was 1970. So progressive rock music was just starting to come about. You had, at the time, you had the Moody's and you had King Crimson and Yes and Genesis just all starting to make names for themselves. And then, of course, Gentle Giant. So some great tunes on this first album. Tune Giant is great. Funny Ways, a very haunting, haunting, almost acoustic nature type of song. Great vocals. Uh, the song A La Carte, kind of dark. Isn't it quiet and cold? Nothing at all. Extended tune. A lot of jamming in that one. A little bluesy. You know, some of the, there's less of what they kind of became known for on this album, but you can hear the seeds of all that. Uh, Why Not? And then ending with The Queen. Kind of dark album. Not the best produced album out of all of their discography, but the songs are really, really strong. And I really like this album a lot. Uh, I think over the years, I've come to appreciate this album more and more and more. Uh, very, very strong. Holds up very well. But of course, they would go on to even greater things. So, all right. So fast forward to, um, oh, and where they come up with the name Gentle Giant, right? So the name Gentle Giant comes from an old Renaissance tale of an actual gentle giant big guy, kind of gentle, who stumbles upon a band and becomes like enthralled with their music and just in love with everything they're doing. So that's kind of how the name of the band came up. Uh, and again, like I mentioned, this album combined, you know, rock and blues, classical jazz, chamber music, and a little bit of soul. They would start to drift away from that uh, on successive releases. So 1971, okay. Martin Smith decides to leave the band. In comes Malcolm Mortimer, okay, pretty notable drummer for that time period. And uh, again, produced by Tony Visconti on the Vertigo label, we've got Acquiring the Taste, 1971, that bizarre album cover, right? I dig it, though. So this probably is their most complex, dissonant, and experimental album, at least compared to the debut. I mean, they would, you know, dive into all sorts of methods of weirdness and what have you, but I think this is probably their most kind of out there album. This is as like uncommercial as it gets. It's almost like the band were just basically saying, you know, F you to the record industry in the world. This is the kind of music we want to make. We're going to do it, uh, like it or not, right? Some great tunes on here. Of course, you know, Pentagruel's Nativity, a fantastic song, one of my personal favorite songs by the band, kicking it off. Uh, Edge of Twilight, kind of mysterious, dark kind of tune. Uh, the house, the street, the room. Dun, 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 dun. Kind of bluesy, but, you know, cool guitar solo from Gary Green in that. Uh, acquiring the Taste, Wreck, another great tune. The Moon is Down, haunting, haunting vocals. I love the way they use, like, because, you know, like Derek and Phil and carry it would all like add like vocals different style vocals and just really kind of creepy haunting song uh then black cat and of course plain truth which is a great great closer on this album uh great guitar work and of course a ribbon violin solo from uh, ray just a um really really great album but again nothing catchy no hooks here at all just but just a fabulous fabulous album just because it's so damn different right so Fast forward to 1972, their first concept album. So the album's called Three Friends. That is the original UK album cover. 
for the U.S. album cover, they would actually use the same cover as the first album, which I always thought was kind of strange. I remember when I first got into Gentle Giant many, many years ago, uh, I believe in like the late 80s or something, I went and uh, picked up all their CDs, and I was like, why do these two have the exact same covers on them? I don't know why they did that, but uh, honestly, the cover art for the first album is way better than this. I, I personally think this is rather rather crappy looking, but hey, whatever. It depicts the concept. So the concept of this is three school friends, good buddies, go through all sorts of things together as they're growing up, but then as they grow up and mature into men, they get separated and go their separate ways and experience life away from each other. Okay, common, common theme. Uh, most of the songs kind of have this theme. So uh, what else we got here? So Malcolm Mortimer around this time gets injured in a motorcycle accident. Haven't we heard that before? Uh, unable to perform and play with the band, so in comes John Pugwash Weathers from Wild Turkey, Graham Bond, and the Grease Band. Uh, initially supposed to be just for the tour, but he winds up sticking around and replacing uh, Mortimer for the rest of the Gentle Giants days. And a good choice. Really, really great energetic rock drummer. Really, really add a lot of power to the band. This was the first album that the band self-produced by themselves. Uh, Tony Visconti was not involved in this. Still on Vertigo in the UK, but here they wind up on Columbia in the US. A very good album. Probably, if not my favorite, one of my favorites. We'll talk more, more about that at the end. So, band is starting to pick up steam, right? Starting to gain a lot of traction, starting to get recognized for what they're doing, starting to get talked about a bit with uh, some of the other top prog acts of the day. So that same year, that was released early in the year, that later that same year, they the guys, creative juices are flowing. They put together and release another album, again for uh, Vertigo in the UK and Columbia in the US, The Amazing Octopus. So it's again, another one of those things where the, in fact, let's see if I, yeah, I actually do. So. In the, U, in the UK, you get the Roger Dean wraparound cover art, which is incredible. I love it. Let's take a look at that all on its own there. Look at that. Check that bad boy out. Does not get enough credit. This is a great Roger Dean art job here. But in the US, we get this, which is also a pretty cool cover. I don't remember who drew this one. So for years, I only had this one, but then of course with successive reissues and remasters, this is the, uh, the Stephen, Stephen Wilson one. Yep, this is the remix by Stephen Wilson. I've, I had, at one point, I had like four versions of, of the Octopus CD, which is crazy, all different covers and you know different masters and all that kind of nonsense. But a great album, nonetheless, regardless of which cover you have. And uh, let's see, this, uh, the, the reason they called it Octopus, this was meant as a pun on octo opus, meaning eight tracks, eight little stories or musical works. Um, the song Knots features a very cool madrigal vocal fuge, which is probably one of the most famous things they've ever done. Pretty incredible, incredible piece of work. Uh, the lyrics from that particular song taken from R.D. Lang's book also titled Knox. Uh, this album is also noteworthy and the tour is noteworthy for the fact that they supported Black Sabbath on, this, on their tour and pretty much got booed off the stage every night. I mean, come on guys, that's not a good fit there. But how cool would it have been to see Black Sabbath in 1972 and this strange, eclectic, unique band, Gentle Giant, opening up for them. The guys have gone on record saying it was one of the worst pairings ever, but hey, would have been cool to see. Uh, so what about the album, you ask? Okay, so uh, a great album. Probably any Gentle Giant thing you talk to, this is in their top three, if not their top release. This, by the band, is considered probably their magnum opus. So you've got to the advent of Panurge. These guys have great, great opening tracks. Oh, you know what? I never talked about the track list of Three Friends. Let's go back to that for a second. Sorry about that, guys. So Prologue, a great, great instrumental tune. School Days, uh, Working All Day, good rocking album. Uh, Peel the Paint, which is one of my favorite tunes. It's kind of like a very mellow... Boom, 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 with violin and bass and gentle lyrics, and then all of a sudden, Gary Green unleashes this ferocious guitar solo and all these guitar effects. Wonderful stuff. Mr. Class and Quality, and of course, the title track, Three Friends. A great, great, great album. Back to Octopus. Sorry about that. Um, the Advent of Panurge, Raconteur Troubadour. Very cool, quirky, catchy tune. Uh, a Cry for Everyone, kind of like an anthemic tune. And then, of course, you've got Knots and Boys in the Band, Dog's Life, Think of Me with Kindness, very gentle song, and I love Dog's Life too, it's a great, great tune, and then River, 
uh, they would what they would do live is they would play like what they called excerpts excerpts from Octopus, and they would do like a medley of a bunch of those tunes together. And of course, they would pick out most of the complex tunes from there. Very very cool. Um, if you don't have the Stephen Wilson remix, uh, with uh, which is on CD and Blu-ray, you need to have this. This is un fucking believable. Excuse my French. All right. Anything else I got to tell you from the Octopus era? Yeah. So uh, this is around this time Phil Shulman leaves the band right after the tour. He basically um, was getting burnt out from touring. He was tired of being away from his family. And at the time, there was a lot of like musical differences and disagreements going on between Phil and his other two brothers. So he would he decided it was best to walk away from the band. He would actually never return. So at this point, Derek takes over the sole lead singer slot with some help from Carrie Minear, who would usually would sing a song or maybe two on each album. But um, Derek just became the front man of the band at that point in time. So let's fast forward to 1973. Okay, another concept album. This one about people who live in glass. The people who live in glass houses should not throw stones. Okay, kind of a loose concept there, but you've heard that saying before. This particular album never officially released in the U.S., but available as an import, an in-demand import. This is one of the most in-demand imports of that year in 1973. Released on the Vertigo label in a glass house. Pretty cool album cover there, kind of like a folio type thing. You got. Side the guys in the band, very strong album. This for many many years was one of, was probably my favorite General Giant album. But I over the last like five years or so, I started to like a couple albums just a little bit more. I, you know, like I said, there's like three or four albums that constantly are in rotation as far as which my favorite is. So what do we got in here? We got uh, the good, good rocker, the Runaway, uh, an Inmates Lullaby, Way of Life, Experience, a great tune that is, uh, a reunion. Of course, in a glass house, just a great, great bunch of tunes. Probably a more, a harder rocking album than anything that came before it, but just as complex and intricate. This again is Gentle Giant at the height of their musical creativity. Very well produced album uh, by the band, actually engineered by Gary Martin. Just a fantastic, fantastic album. That again, if any of you were to tell me this is your favorite, I couldn't argue with it at all because this octopus. Acquiring the Taste, Three Friends, the next one we're going to talk. I mean, it's just a string of albums that are just absolutely impeccable. So speaking of the next album, so 1974, Power and the Glory. Another fantastic, fantastic production here. Uh, Vertigo in the UK, Capitol Records this time here in the US. Uh, another concept album, of course, about power and corruption. Uh, how many tracks we got here? So we got the song Proclamation. What wonderful keyboards on there. This is just, this. around this time period, the band is starting to get really, really playful with their music. A lot of counterpoint complexities going on. Bits of jazz and jazz fusion popping in. Just really good stuff. So sincere. Uh, a wonderful vocal tune that just, you know, and with kick-ass instrumentation. Complex as it gets. Aspirations. Play in the game, playful, quirky tune with some pop in it. Cogs and Cocks, Cogs and Cogs, Cogs and Cocks, sorry. Um, a ridiculously complex tune. It's one of the most amazing arrangements this band ever created. Uh, no God's a Man, kind of soaring, majestic tune. Uh, the Face, and uh, of course, Valedictory. But uh, then you got the bonus track. They actually recorded the title track, The Power and the Glory, which they never put on the album it was I believe it was released as a single but it actually didn't make the album proper until years later on CD reissues they actually put it back in, onto the album and it's actually a pretty cool tune it's not quite the same as the rest of the stuff on the album it's very kind of dun 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 it's a very cool tune uh, kind of majestic real catchy good stuff really dig this this also is the uh, the Stephen Wilson remix quite good Great, another great album. Again, Gentle Giant just firing on all cylinders in a big way. Uh, at this point in time, band's touring nonstop, ready to get back into the studio. It's time for a new record label. They signed with Chrysalis Records. So, of course, you know, the home of uh, Gentle Giant and UFO and 10 Years After and all sorts of other bands. And they release the Freehand album. Another great one. 
another album that for me just really does it top to bottom, just great tunes. Uh, this is their first album to enter the Billboard Top 50. It's actually made it to number 50 when it was released. That's a, it was a really, really good seller for the band and probably their kind of peak as far as sales in the U.S. So what do we got on here? Just the same. And again, this band, almost every album has amazing openers that pull you right in. Just the same is awesome. Just a quirky, a lot of things going on. You know, the Meniere's keyboards, synths, and guitars, and it's all over the place. Great stuff. On Reflection. Great, great tune. Uh, the title track, Freehand. Can't beat it. It's hard rocking. It's catchy. It's got a little jazzy and classical bits in there. It's prog all the way. Wonderful. Time to Kill, another majestic rocker. Uh, his Last Voyage. It's a great, soaring tune. Talibant and Mobile. Uh, great album, top to bottom. Great album, top to bottom. Again, produced by the band, uh, engineered by Gary Martin. Wonderful stuff. Probably, the next album's really good too, but probably their last great great studio album, in my opinion. Okay. Fast forward to 76. So you notice about an album a year, basically sometimes well, one instance, two a year. So we go to 1976. This is a concept album, ba concept album based on an imaginary interview with the band, basically poking fun at the music industry and media interviews that with bands that kind of made the bands look silly, but more done to construct like uh, images for marketing and all that kind of stuff. There was a lot of that going on, you know, Hit Parade or Circus and Cream Magazine and Rolling Stone interviewing these bands and, you know, making the band sound ridiculous and what have you, but that's what they did back then. So this, the band were not into the, all that kind of stuff. So this basically is them making fun of that whole scene right there. It's a very good album. I think for me, it's a little step down from all the ones that came before, but it is by no means a bad album. Okay. So released in 1976. Peaked at number 137, so a big drop off from Freehand, but you got some great stuff on here. The title track interview is great. Give It Back is a good rocker. Uh, design, another show, Empty City. I love Empty City. Real kind of haunting, chilling tune. Timing, another one of those really complex, fast rockers from the band. And then uh, I Lost My Head, which is a great tune, probably my favorite tune on here. That kind of... Uh, is a, a fantastic way for the album to end and it's just like it's grand grandiose and majestic awesome stuff really really good stuff um their last if freehand was their last truly great album this was their last really good album okay but not to take anything away from the live album that came out that later that same year and by the way, on, on these last couple tours, opening for bands like Yes and Jethro Tull, Gary Wright and Rick Wakeman, all sorts of other acts. This is the uh, Playing the Fool official live album. One of the most underrated live albums of all time, folks. Incredible. Which just goes to show you, you listen to this, you, you feel, you hear how great a live band these guys were. Just incredible. I think one of my biggest regrets in my life was not getting to see Gentle Giant live because basically I was a little bit too young. I probably could have seen them on, in 1980, um, but they weren't touring the U.S. by that point in time. So, uh, or at least not that I remember, unless maybe they were. Yeah, they, they might have been actually, but uh, I never got a chance to see them. So um, basically has a lot of the good stuff until then. So listen to the set list. Just the same, Proclamation, On Reflection, Excerpts from Octopus, Funny Ways, The Runaway, Experience, So Sincere, Freehand, Sweet Georgia Brown, the Breakdown in Brussels, Peel the Paint slash I Lost My Head Medley, and a great way to end it. It's just a fantastic, fantastic live album. There's a you know part on here where they all kind of switch instruments, and there's a part where they all do the recorder solo. It's just it's fantastic stuff. Again, like I said, one of the best live albums of all time, especially like for, for prog bands, a really, really good one. After this, things were never the same. So, the next album, The Missing Piece, 1977. Kind of like the cover art here. You know? Oops. Here's where the cracks are really starting to show. Some good tunes, but overall, just a decent album. Nothing spectacular here. 
Uh, you know, by this time, punk starting to become popular, you know, disco, pop, all that kind of stuff. So you could tell the band were starting to aim for a little more commercial acceptance. acceptance. You know, like I said, a lot of pop on this one. Not a lot of prog, little hints of uh, what would later became new wave and punk and stuff like that. So Two Weeks in Spain kicks it off. A really cool tune. I dig it. It may not be traditional Gentle Giant, but it's catchy as hell. Uh, I'm turning around. I actually like that song. Good kind of pop rock tune. Bet you thought we couldn't do it. That's kind of their stab at punk. Not much into that. Uh, who do you think you are? That's okay. Mountain Time is actually very good. I dig Mountain Time a lot. Uh, as Old As You're Young is a very good tune. That's kind of, you know, got good acoustic work and uh, nice, nice arrangements there. Memories of Old Days, that's a gorgeous tune. I like that a lot. Uh, winning, kind of fun, kind of pop. For Nobody, that's also kind of them trying to be energetic and kind of grab that kind of punk attitude a little bit. Like I said, it's uh, some of it works, some of it doesn't. It's definitely a major drop down from what came before, but there's still enough to recommend on this album. This is probably for me, um, well, the next album, in my opinion, is, is just bad overall, but the, their last album is not too bad. We'll get to that in a second. So The Missing Piece, I like it, don't love it. This one here, I really don't have any use for, unfortunately. Giant for a day. This is a huge misstep for the band, in my opinion. There's not a lot worthwhile on here. Uh, this was released in 1978. This is made, you know, mostly pop and soft rock. Not a good seller. If you talk to most hardcore fans of the band, they'd rather forget about this album. Uh, yeah, Words from the Wise is okay. Giant for a day. Eh, Spooky Boogie is kind of a cool instrumental. I'm trying to think if there's anything else on here that I really can. Rock Climber is okay. Again, not much to recommend here. Not a lot of prog on this album at all. These guys were really just trying to figure out who they were in 1978, and they really didn't have any answers, unfortunately. So, 1979, decades coming to a close. The band's last gasp. If you read interviews with the band and actually talk to Derek Shulman about this myself uh, many moons ago, he says by this time that half the band were pretty disinterested and they just kind of went through the motions here. More of a harder rock and pop album. It's called Civilian. I actually kind of like this album. And, you know, if you were to stack this up against what Genesis were doing at the time, what Yes was soon to be doing at the time. So, you know, you're looking at like Duke and Abacab and maybe Rush Moving Pictures and uh, 90125, that kind of stuff. It stacks up fairly well. It's not a bad album by any means. Um, sounds good. It's energetic. It's pretty rock. And again, not a lot of those early gentle giant isms that we remember from all those classic albums but a fairly solid album hell of a lot better than giant for a day I'll tell you that much uh what do we got in here convenience is a great crisp hard rocker all through the night good anthemic kind of pop rock tune shadows in the street number one underground real catchy tune kind of new wave-ish you know uh, i am a camera good tune inside out and it's not imagination i like that that's pretty like i said pretty energetic pop rock it's a hard rock on there. And then uh, the bonus track on here is a tune, Heroes. Good, catchy tune. So I like this album, actually. Uh, probably I like this album more than Giant for a Day, The Missing Piece. I think it's pretty strong. It's pretty fun. And uh, But unfortunately, that was it. They toured in the summer of 1980, and then the band split up, never to be heard from again as Gentle Giant. So what did they do after that? Well, you know, a couple of guys in the band went and were very, very busy. Derek Shulman being one of them. So he went on to become A&R manager at record labels like Polygram, Mercury. He became the president of Atco Records, as well as Roadrunner Records. He signed all sorts of bands over the years. You know, you, you've heard the stories, you know, Pantera, Dream Theater, Bon Jovi, numerous other ones. Uh, Ray moved into soundtrack work and producing. John Weathers kept playing drums. He went to the band Man, the Welsh band Man. He also briefly appeared in Wild Turkey again. Uh, Gary Green moved to the Chicago area, played in a number of bands over the years, uh, a lot of blues bands and what have you. And uh, he also was in the kind of, I don't, I don't know what we call it, Gentle Giant tribute band, but he and Malcolm Mortimer and Kerry Minear put together a band called Three Friends, which was mainly, a, a, you know, a touring band to go and recreate the music of uh, Gentle Giant, which uh, lasted for a couple of years. Kerry Minier, after he dropped out of the Three Friends thing, uh, he went back to the UK. You know, he's been working in gospel music, uh, doing some occasional recordings. But he also runs a la carte music and handles all legal and royalty issues with the Gentle Giant catalog. 
Phil is retired from music, but uh, his son, Damon Shulman, you've probably heard his name numerous times over the years. He's been a, in, in Prague quite a bit. Uh, Phil worked with him quite a lot over the years. Martin Smith passed away, unfortunately, in 19, 1997. And uh, Malcolm Mortimer continues to drum in sessions and keep busy on the music scene. So one of those bands that people have constantly asked for the reunion, and they constantly say, no, we can't do it, we're not going to do it. I actually had the great opportunity to sit down and interview um, Derek Shulman in his office back when he was running DRT Music back in, oh boy, I'm going to say the early 2000s. And we had a great conversation and I asked him, I said, you know, I talked to so many people who are clamoring and asking for a Gentle Giant reunion, a one-off, and why won't you guys do it when so many other of your peers, and at the time, Vandegraaff Generator had just gotten back for a reunion, uh, and he looked me in the face and he said, you know, it's just been so long, we've all moved on to so many other things, and it would take so much preparation to make it happen. The problem is, whether it would be good or not, one appearance, one show, would never be enough for, for, for most people, because we would have to, you know, not everybody from over the world who loved our band would be able to come to see that one show. So one would lead to two, would lead to five, would lead to ten, and we just we just can't do it. Or at least, you know, the Shulman brothers uh, were not willing to do it. I know a couple other members of the band were into it. but uh, So unfortunately, it's never happened. I'd love to see it. Is it probably too late? Yeah, probably too late, but it's a shame. But again, an incredible band, incredible musicianship, such different sounds, different styles, all sorts of different elements kind of coming together, and it all made sense. Now, I've met plenty of people over the years who have listened to Gentle Giants music, and they just don't get it, and I totally understand that. Uh, you know, there are some really complex, different artists. You know, Magma comes to mind. I know a lot of you always ask me, how come you never talk about Magma on the show? I have tried for like 20-some-odd years to get into Magma. I just can't do it. I've tried so hard, and I just, they just don't do it for me. And I know a lot of people that Gentle Giant just doesn't work for them. But for me, I've loved them from the first time I heard them. They're just so unique, so different, really clicks with me. And I like the fact that there's all these different elements and styles coming into their music. Some of the stuff is hard rock and some is totally kind of jazzy and classical and avant-garde. And then you got bits of folk and very British sounding music. And then, uh, you know, it's just all these things coming together, all these different instruments, just fantastic stuff. But I don't want to leave you without talking about the numerous live albums that they have. I have a stack of them, but I know there's a lot more. Probably some of you have even more than me. Uh, I'm going to go through these. these are, I think they're kind of in the order of when the, when the shows were recorded, but I may be a little off here. So here's Gentle Giant live in Rome, 1974. Some of these are kind of boots. Some of these were officially released. I've just collected them over the years. You know, the one thing is a lot of them, uh, there's a lot of shows that were recorded and released from a lot of the similar tours. So a lot of these have like kind of the same set list, but I don't really mind because they all sound a little bit different. Uh, then we got Gentle Giant Artistically Crime. This is a two disc set. Pretty cool. I like that a lot. Uh, Gentle Giant Endless Life. This is uh, like disc one. Is live at the Music Hall in White Plains, New York, near where I live, from 1975, and then also uh, Community Theater in Berkeley, California, later that same year. So i uh, got some cool stuff on there. Again, if you've never heard any of the Gentle Giant live recordings or seen some of the videos, you definitely need to do that. Live in Stockholm, Sweden, 75. This is a good one. I like this one a lot. It goes back in time, people. Long time ago. Uh, live in New York, 1975. This is uh, also from the White Plains show. So this is a similar recording, I think from a different source from the other one that I had back there. Well, that was a two disc set. It's got additional stuff on it. Here we got the King Biscuit Flower Hour. Uh, this is from 1975 at the Academy of Music, also in New York. What? They played New York a lot. Of course, not when I was going to concerts. I'm a little too young. 1975, I was only nine. Dad, take me to see Gentle Giant. Gentle who? Who the hell is that? What do they sing? Never mind. Uh, the Missing Face. This is uh, live from the uh, ballroom in Cleveland, Ohio, 77. Let's see the set list on this. You know. And what do we got? Got some BBC stuff here. So Out of the Fire, the BBC concerts. This is uh, 73 and 78. This is good. Uh, unfortunately, the 1973 recordings are only like four, four tunes. But uh, still, 
pretty cool stuff. Uh, let's see that. Here we go. More BBC. Uh, out of the fire to out of the woods. This is what year was this recorded in? I don't remember. But also pretty cool stuff. Again, you know, you get a lot of the same songs on a lot of these, but you know, one of those bands that didn't quite play everything exactly the same night for night. The Last Steps. This is from, this is the last tour of America. So I'm assuming this is the civilian tour. All right. Kind of moving a cover there. And then I always like to cover this. This is The Last Giant Step, live in 1980. This is also from New York, um, 1980. Again, I wonder if this is the same. This might be the same show here. Let's check this out. Is it? This might be the same show, people. Actually, no. You know, this uh, This might be from some, I think that's from some, somewhere else. Anyway, regardless, this is what we're looking at here. I like that carry on cello on the front, which is kind of cool. But um, there's the set list. And then what else we got here? I got this kind of cool little box set called Under Construction. All right. You know what? I also have another box set. This has got all sorts of little oddities and things and unreleased snippets and instrumental takes on things. Just, you know, one of those listen once and twice and shelve it. Uh, I have a full box set, which I forget what it's called which has more rarities and all sorts of stuff that's buried in my closet. Sorry, I didn't pull that out. It's actually a cool little box set, like one of those like mid, mid late 90s box sets. I wish I pulled it out because it's a cool cover anyway. And then recently, the last thing we've seen is the three-piece suite. This came out a few months back. This is basically like um, Stephen Wilson remixes of um, most of the, the um, stuff from the first uh, two albums. Okay, actually the first three albums. So you get uh, remixes of majority of the... Um, of the tunes from Gentle Giant Acquiring the Taste and Three Friends, which is kind of neat. And then you got a Blu ray with uh, original album mixes and, uh, you know, all sorts of stuff on Blu ray and CD. So this is pretty cool. I like this a lot. I like the uh, the way Steven kind of remixed some of those classic tunes from those first couple albums because, you know, the production on those is not great. You know, you buy, you listen to some of those CDs and they haven't really had a true kind of reissue of those. And because um, I think some of the original the original tapes are, are lost. So anyway, that's my Gentle Giant show, guys. 38 minutes and counting. Hope you liked it. It was one of my favorite bands of all time. So I really enjoyed kind of putting together the research again and really kind of looking hard at, at this wonderful band that I've loved for so, so long and talking about the albums because they're most of them are truly, truly great. And um this is on the web at www.seatranquilly.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, of course, we're on the mighty YouTube. All sorts of cool stuff coming up. Got some rants I'm kicking around. Um, I apologize, the Judas Priest history of has been put off. The just scheduling has just not worked between Chris Allen and I. It's a busy time of year for the both of us, so uh, we will get to it. Uh, I've got a Gillen history of coming up soon that's going to talk about Ian, the Ian Gillen band and the Gillen band so kind of everything he did in between leaving Deep Purple and then joining Sabbath and rejoining Purple again that's coming up soon uh, all sorts of other cool stuff we got new product shows coming up and all that so take care go out and listen to your Gentle Giant albums okay go on YouTube and watch some live stuff if you haven't already go out and buy some Blu-rays or DVDs as I urge you to really investigate their live work because they were truly remarkable uh, and a band that uh, I really love. And uh, if you haven't discovered them yet, please do. I think you'll dig them. And if you are a fan like me, hopefully the show gave you a little bit more insight uh, into the band. Or if you didn't learn anything new, hopefully it was cool to listen to someone talk about uh, a band that he really loves. So that's kind of what this is all about. So anyway, guys, take care. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.